Uh, good evening, everybody. It's good to good to see each one of you out tonight. I do have uh, one update uh, for our prayer list. James's uh, doctor's appointment is Wednesday you know, this week, so that's uh, that's remember him. Has anybody else got any updates or additions to our prayer list? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Let's continue to remember Vicki and all her family. Uh, tonight, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Verse 11 says, uh, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the Spirit, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be by they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Let's, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are tonight. We lift up these, Lord, we've mentioned for prayer today. And, uh, Lord, uh, I know Amy and James have a uh, heart and cancer doctor appointments this week. And, uh, Lord, uh, we pray for our election on Tuesday. We lift up James Robbins to you and Kenny Yarbrough, uh, Ethan Hollinsworth, and Paula Dillon. And, Lord, we lift up Vicki Williams and her family to you. She would always be comforting them. And, Lord, just be with us tonight as we look to your word. Give us what we need to know to grow closer to you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We live in a day when the, when things of the flesh are exalted and lust is honored. Both of those are contrary to God's word. We can paint whatever picture we want to, but as it says there in, in verse 11, the fleshly lust war against the soul. So if you look tonight to verse number 11, it says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers. Now, uh, a lot of times when we look at the word strangers and pilgrims, we look, take a look at their definitions and we think that they pretty close to being the same. A uh, stranger means someone who dwells alongside or is exiled, but his home is elsewhere. It is the picture of a foreigner who is in a country for a while, long enough to rent or lease a house, but his, he is not a permanent resident. He has no legal rights or status. He is a stranger, an exile who lives in a strange land. The word pilgrim, however, has more of a temporary idea than the stranger does. A pilgrim has the idea of a visitor or a sojourner or a foreigner who may be visiting and staying for a while but not long enough to lease a house. So in other words, just kind of passing through life. The point is this. The believer is only passing through the earth. Our home, the place that we have uh, uh, citizenship in as a believer, is in heaven. Now look at the last part of verse number 11. So he says, I beseech you as strangers, pilgrims, to abstain from 
fleshly lust. We want to read uh, quite a list of those. We find them in Galatians chapter 5, if you'll turn over there with me. Usually when we turn to Galatians chapter 5, we talk about the fruit of the Spirit. We'll get to that here in just a minute. But let's look at Galatians 5, starting in verse number 19. We'll read down through verse 21. Then, as we said, we'll also get down through verse 23, 22 and 23, talking about the fruit of the Spirit. So in verse 19... It tells us what the works of the flesh are. And I uh, want to remind you that it says, uh, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Let's talk about some of them. Adultery. Sexual unfaithfulness to your spouse. Fornication is any kind of abnormal sex, whether that be premarital sex, where it be adultery. Uncleanness is moral impurity. Lasciviousness is just plain old filthiness. Most of us know what filthiness is, living in the, where we live. Indecency, shamefulness. Idolatry, of course, is the worship of idols. But what we found about rich craft was uh, interesting to me. Of course, most of us know witchcraft has the same thing to do with sorcery. But here's what else I found. The use of drugs or of evil spirits to gain control over the lives of others or over one's own life. A lot of uh, religious cults that I've read about, heard about down through the years would fall into the witchcraft category according to that definition. Hatred is hostility or animosity. It's hatred that lingers or is held for a long time, kind of like what we've talked about with malice. That's hatred that's uh, put on the back burner and uh, just kind of let simmer there on that back eye for a long time. Variance is strife, discord, contention, fighting. I uh, want to remind you about something. If you'll turn over with me to Proverbs chapter number 6. We read this list just ever so often, but it hadn't been that long ago that we read it. We want to get down to verse 19. It's, these are six things that the Lord hates, seven are abomination to him. You can read that list. It starts in verse number 16 when it starts describing the six things, seven that are, are abomination to him. Verse 17 starts the list. Verse 19 finishes it up. So look at verse 19. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. And that's pretty much what strife, our definition of strife, is. A conflict, a struggle, a fight, a contention, dissension. If you look back to our list in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 20, so we got adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions is a division or rebellion, heresies, rejecting the fundamental beliefs of God or the teachings of the church. Envyings comes in two different categories that we find there in verse 21. 
not only wants the things that another one has, but begrudges the fact that the person has them. And the second thing under envyings is that wants not only the things to be taken away from the person, but wants him to suffer through the loss of them. Murders, of course, that's to kill. Drunkenness, taking drink or drugs to affect one's senses for lust or pleasure. And then we get down to revelings. taking part in wild parties or in drinking parties, lying around indulging in the feeding of the lust of the flesh. Now, what did he say in, what did Peter write to us in 1 Peter chapter 2? It says to abstain from fleshly lust, fleshly lust which war against the soul. So he gave us, Paul did in Galatians chapter 5, gave us that whole long list of things that... Uh, or the works of the flesh. But then we get down to verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit. Now, John's mama asked me yesterday, said, did them peach seed come up? No, ma'am, not yet. And she told me that she had planted some apple seed that had not come up as yet. Uh, now, I'm just going to go I'm not going to tell you what she told me. She said she took those seed from peach. But Steve, the only way I'm going to know it's for sure a peach is if it produces a peach tree that produces peach fruit. That's the only way I'm going to know for sure. It sure did look like a peach seed. But Justin could have switched them with something else. Who knows? The fruit of the Spirit. How are we going to know that the Spirit has an influence on our life? Well, we're going to have joy in our life. We're going to have peace in our life. There's going to be long-suffering in our life, gentleness in our life, goodness in our life, faith in our life, meekness in our life, temperance or self-control in our life. There is no law against those. The fruit of the Spirit. So there's a long list of the works of the flesh, but the fruit of the... And then he gives us, but the fruit of the Spirit are these things. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. If you look back with me to Second Peter chapter 2, those things, the works of the flesh, the fleshly lust, war against... The soul. One writer says that they enslave and weaken the freedom of the soul. They hamper the growth of the soul. J. Bernard McGee asked a question in his commentary. The child of God is to publish the praises of God. How are we going to do that? Well, before we went Facebook Live, on Facebook Live tonight, we did what a lot of people would say would be giving God praise, and that's singing. And that, that's a good answer. J. Vernon McGee offers a different answer in addition to the singing. Show forth his praises by not manifesting the works of the flesh. You and I, as a child of God, are supposed to be different than what the world is. Now, let's look at verse 12. Having your conversation or your behavior honest among the Gentiles. The word honest means a good life. A life is honorable, righteous, pure, lovely, decent, excellent, upright, Noble. How's the only way we can have that? Can we go out and dig it up on our own? Nope. The only way we can have that is to have God in his rightful place in our life. I want, to turn, I want you to turn back with me, if you will, just quickly to Proverbs chapter number 1, verse number 7. 
Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7. God's word says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, I had a feller ask me one time, Anna and Jenna were along with us during this meeting we had, and he said, well, I'm a new father. What, what is your advice for a new father? Here's my advice. It, I didn't charge him a bit. Get your child in church somewhere. Take him to church. Well, guess what? The subject was quickly changed. He wanted some advice, but he didn't want apparently that advice. Proverbs 1 verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Having God, a reverence for God, having him first in our life, that's the beginning of knowledge. But Solomon didn't stop there. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fear of the Lord, having him in a rightful place, is the beginning of knowledge. So, uh, back in 1 Peter 2 and verse 12, when we have our behavior honest, among, that's having God first because the only way we can be righteous is to have the Lord in his rightful place. Folks are going to speak evil of us. Folks are going to point their fingers at us. But here's what we never need to lose sight of. More than likely, everybody that's listening to me that knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, somebody took up time with us to tell us about Jesus. We don't never need to forget that. If you'll turn over with me for just, just a minute, one more place, to 1 John chapter 2. Verse number two. First John chapter two, verse number two. It says this, and he is the propitiation of our sins. He is the atonement for our sins but not, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. You see, we could have an attitude that we stick our nose up in the air and we're saved, we're on our way to heaven, our citizenship's there, we're just a stranger and pilgrim here, and forget about the fact that there are unbelievers around us that need to know the same Jesus that we know. Oh, he had compassion enough on us. He led somebody to talk to and teach, to, teach us about the ways of the Lord. May we be doing those same things because he didn't just die for our sins. He died for everybody's sins. And we don't ever need to forget that. If you turn back to First Peter chapter 2 and verse 12, having our conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak evil, speak against you as evil, and they will, you say, well, I don't know about it. Good. Don't think about it. Just keep loving the Lord. They may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. You say, well, what in the world is the day of visitation? Here's one writer's thoughts about that. The day of visitation is the day of God's inspection and salvation. The day when he saves a man. Perhaps maybe by 
the way that we present Jesus in our everyday life, somebody could be, get saved. And on, their, on that person's day of visitation, when God saves them, they can glorify the Lord as we do. Now, I want to take you back to several weeks ago. Uh, I've shared this with you more than one time, but J. Vernon McGee was pastoring a church, I believe it was in Los Angeles, and preacher from down the road, or so-called preacher from down the road, wanted to meet with him. And talked to J. Vernon McGee this way. said, uh, can we not get along a little bit better? Can we not come together and do that, come together and maybe preach together? All this stuff, just wanting them to come together. And J. Vernon McGee said, well, let me ask you a few things. Is the Jesus that you preach about, was he born of a virgin? No. The other guy said, well, I don't believe in the virgin birth. Was Jesus that you preach about sinless? Did he die on the cross and was he resurrected? And he went on down the list. And point by point, there wasn't much agreement. And he said, well, then you're, you're preaching a different Jesus that I'm preaching. Therefore, there are some things that you and I can agree on. Here's something I hope that we all can agree on, though. The same Jesus that we know, we ought to have a hope that everybody knows the same Jesus that we know. J. Bernard McGee says this conversation, among, honest among the Gentiles, it includes honesty, good works, all believers in any kind of business dealing show forth the praises of God by their honesty. This is a witness to the world. See, each one of us have decisions to make each and every day. Are we going to make that decision to do what Jesus would do? Or are we going to go against and do what, in my case, just do what Marty wants to do? Dear to beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. This next verse tells us that folks are going to be talking about us. Don't give them no ammunition. Follow the Holy Spirit of God. Verse 13 again, or excuse me, verse 12. Having your conversation, having your behavior honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. I'm told of a, a blind man, or excuse me, not a blind man, but a deaf man that lived in the city of Birmingham that day by day, week by week, his neighbors observed him. And they observed him each Sunday getting his car all dressed up and then a little bit after 12, his car would come back. And they observed this Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And some people got to wondering about him. Why does a deaf man always go to church? Can't hear what's going on. James can't even tell if the songs are fast or slow. I don't guess. If you can't hear. Can't hear if they loud or if they're soft. If you can't hear. Can't hear the preacher if you can't hear. Somebody got enough nerve to ask him. He said, Well, over the years I have lost my hearing. My neighbor don't know that I'm deaf. But he knows I go to church every Sunday. Are we going to do what self wants to do? Or are we going to do what God wants us to do? May we, by our good works, 
glorify God. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are this evening. And Lord, uh, thank you for all that you do for us. Most of all, thank you for your son Jesus dying on the cross in our place. And Lord, uh, may, your, may you have your way in each one of our lives. Lord, this week you're going to place folks in our path. May we be allowing you to shine that light through us that they can see you living within us. Lord, have your way in each one of our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As James comes with a song of invitation tonight, I want to bid farewell to our Facebook friends. We'll be back on live Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, still talking in Acts 2 and 42. And we'll be talking about uh, this early church continued steadfastly in the breaking of bread. And we hope you join us again Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Remember, I love you. Remember most of all, though, that God loves you.